All right, guys, how are we doing? So how many of you guys have at least one action item you're going to take with you when you leave today? I see a couple hands. Raise them high. Raise them high. I want to see them. Okay, at least one action item. I love it. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. I need everybody to stand up. Yep, I know. Stand up. Oh, okay, get all the wiggles out. Okay, I know we're like two amazing speakers in. And we have two amazing speakers to go, and I need everybody to get the wiggles out, right? We gotta stretch to the ceiling. We gotta reach down to the floor. Oh yeah, I can't hardly do that. My back hurts. Okay. But we stretch to the ceiling, we're good. All right, everybody can sit back down. <laughs> no joke, getting older is for the birds, I tell you. <laughs> All right, you guys, our next speaker, uh, he was, uh, held some really important roles at some internet startup companies, uh, you know, before launching his career in the real estate realm in 2002. And um, he believes that agents and brokers, that they do the heavy lifting, right, in the real estate world. How many of you guys have written five offers, 10 offers for one client? in a matter of like 10 days. <laughs> okay, yes, definitely heavy lifting. Um, and that these agents and brokers and um, you know, the people out there doing the heavy lifting, that they deserve all the benefits of being a shareholder in that company that they work with. This gentleman founded the first cloud-based brokerage in 2009, which is eXp Realty. And he is in the audience right up here in the front. And he's going to be coming up next to share some really cool thoughts with you guys. So make sure you break out those pens, pencils, iPads, notepads, phones, everything that you have, because you're going to want to take notes. Come on up, Glenn Sanford. Yeah. <laughs> you going to take this one? Okay. Yeah, we'll take you that one. I'm going to get okay. back for you when I'm done. Yeah, you can get that one. All right. So uh, um, it, it uh, kind of went back and forth a little bit what I was going to talk about a little bit, uh, and, and, and I saw the introduction to EXP. So I'm going to talk a little bit about EXP, but then I was also told I was going to talk about the future of real estate, so I was making rapid notes going, okay, what am I talking about there? So anyway, and then I asked Randy how, how long I've got to talk, and then it's 40 minutes. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all the parameters I've learned in the last uh, hour or so. I so five five minutes? Five, five minutes? Oh, cool. <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. Okay, uh, so um, uh, it's 2002, um, 20 years ago this month, uh, I got my real estate license. I uh, started as an, as an agent actually on a team. I, I was a, kind of an internet uh, uh, um, marketer. I had built some community websites up in the Pacific Northwest for Chamber of Commerces while I was working on a, uh, another internet company. I, I cratered it in 2001, so I was a dot bomber with an e-commerce logistics company that I raised a couple million dollars for. And at 35, I was uh, broke. Um, I was doing uh, some local website development work. I found out the other day uh, from my daughters, and I didn't realize it, or I didn't remember it, may have blocked it out of my memory, but we were back, actually on food stamps at the time. But I do remember that we had a, um, a, uh, a Geo Metro, which I got a ticket in, which I can't believe I got a ticket in, um, and, and a Ford Focus wagon with a burn in the seat. And that's actually why I showed properties in when I first got my license. Uh, but in 2002, I had a, a local website in, uh, in Birch Bay, Washington, uh, right up uh, on the coast. Some of you have probably been up there. It's a, it's a neat little area. Uh, but I was uh, uh, selling ads to local businesses. And uh, at that time, uh, a local realtor I, I tried to sell a $25 a month ad to. And um, when uh, uh, he, uh, the email bounced, I called him a couple weeks later after I sent him another email. It bounced again. And I got his email fixed. So I could send him an email, and they decided that I was pretty smart, and I should uh, help him with uh, some of his stuff. He was, he was 62 or 63 at the time. I was 35, and, uh, and so I started to do some work for him, built his website. And then he said, Glenn, you need your real estate license. And I was like, 
a real estate license? Are you kidding? Nobody makes any money in real estate for their first few years in the business. I mean, that was my mindset at the time. And, uh, and then he said, well, what's it going to take? And I said, I don't know. Guarantee me three grand a month. And he said, fine. And I go, crap. And, uh, <laughs> so, so then I said, uh, well, I'm kind of this internet guy. So I'm going to uh, just just uh, build my business online. I'm going to work with the clients that I meet online. I'm not going to wear a realtor pin at the grocery store. I'm not going to talk to my friends and family. And and um, and it's either going to work, it's not going to work. And and he said, fine, fine, fine. And I said, crap, crap, crap. So, uh, and then and then um, uh, the then I had to study for the exam um, in Washington State. It was a little easier than it was in Oregon. Uh, it was uh, you just did it online through through a platform called Rockwell, and it was pretty easy to get your license. And uh, 30 days later, he said, "Glenn, how come you don't have a real estate license?" I told him I get paid $60 an hour to do uh, website development work, and he literally paid me $60 an hour to study for my license. So that's how I got into the business. It was it was kind of a weird way. Uh, probably nobody else has that story, so it's very unique. Everybody's probably got a unique story, but. My, mine, I feel, is extra unique because it was me. Um, so uh, I got in the business uh, April 29th, uh, 2002, and uh, to clients that I met online, uh, I sold 17 properties between, between then, then and the end of the year. So I was rookie of the year at the office I was part of. I was on his team. I did all my lead gen, took out all the clients, wrote all the contracts, did everything else, and I gave him 30% plus another 30% to the office. So. I wasn't making a whole bunch of money, but but it was I learned the business, great mentor, uh, and and I did that for two years. And then in 2004, uh, I had actually launched some other websites for some other um, in some other markets, and I was doing some referral-based uh, lead gen. And uh, uh, I decided to go uh, to leave the team and and looked at where I could move. And so I went to, as many of you. Uh, have been, and some of you may still be there, I went to Keller Williams. I read the Red Book, learned about profit share. I said I got leads. I could probably recruit agents. And over the course of the next three years, I recruited 184 agents to, to Keller. And uh, in 2007, when I got my 1099, I found out I only got a, uh, six grand for that effort. And I paid about a hundred and something thousand dollars to one local office and, uh, and decided I could hire a broker less expensive. Uh, in the middle of that, by the way, where is uh, Gertrude Otson? She, there, there's Gertrude. Uh, Gertrude was actually on our team in Portland, actually built uh, a team uh, in six different cities, uh, and uh, Bellingham, Seattle, Portland, Las Vegas, um, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Phoenix, Arizona, and then we had some, some small teams. Uh, but Gertrude actually joined uh, the team in 2005, and she was actually the very first managing broker for the state of Oregon uh, back in uh, 2010. So, so when we, we uh, converted the team to, uh, to EXP, she helped us grow it uh, in, the, in the early days and uh, still uh, with us. Can't believe you've put up with me for this many years. So, um, but uh, it's been, it's been a, a, quite a ride. Uh, but uh, in 2007, went independent, uh, had a really good year. Uh, that year did about 73 million in production on our team-based uh, business. 2008, first half uh, was great. Second half, not so much. Um, to, uh, you know, we 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 went from seven closing about seven million a month to about 700 thousand dollars in transactions in October. We closed. Uh, we actually got rid of uh, three of our offices. Went to a skeleton crew up in uh, Bellingham, Washington, and really kind of reimagined. Uh, the real estate brokerage model in 2009 uh, because, uh, quite frankly, we couldn't afford offices. And uh, we had a little bit of, you know, technology background, obviously, and, and we said, you know, ba at that time, even in 2009, we had 3G on our phones. We almost all had cable internet. It was, a, it was substantially different than 2002 when um, the internet and the phone sucked. And the internet at our home sucked too. It was, you know, dial-up internet versus cable internet. But by 2009, you know, we really had this backdrop of really technology that kind of connected us all. Um, we, we said, how do we compete with all the models? We actually laid out all the models, Keller Williams, which we liked, but, you know, the, the offices weren't profitable. There wasn't really, uh, the profit share didn't work, but it loved the seven-level profit share system. We looked at that, Remax, Exit, there was a company called Connect. We just laid them all out and said, how do we build the most agent-centric real estate brokerage model that beats every single model? And so we did that 
from about uh, uh, March uh, of 2009 through about J June, July. Uh, we kind of had our model kind of laid out. And then we we're trying to solve for how do you build collaboration and community if you don't have a physical office? And, and we, um, uh, we, one of the things that we recognize is that the teams I, I traveled to uh, tended to do well, and if I didn't travel there, uh, they didn't, they didn't uh, do as well. So we wanted to figure out how to use technology to sort of distribute leadership. And back then, there was a platform called Second Life, and, uh, um, and that was kind of an avatar-based metaverse. Uh, kind of early before Mark Zuckerberg invented it. Uh, but, um, the, uh, but at that time, we, we said, why don't we use something like that? So we actually literally went to work on October 6, 2009, in a metaverse. Um, and uh, we, we referred to eXp as the world's f first fully immersive Web 3.0 real estate brokerage. Um, we've shortened that to just cloud. So that's uh, <laughs> uh, it's way easier to say, way easier to remember. Everybody still says, what's the cloud? But anyway, um, th so we, we, we did that. We went to work, and I told the team, um, this is either going to work or it's not going to work. And if it doesn't work, we're all looking for work. So that was, that was kind of the, the burn the bridges. We, we kind of moved in. We, we, did, uh, we, we launched EXP with about 25 agents, um, um, and then, and then uh, maybe 30, 35 when you think about Oregon uh, joining joining up uh, back then, and now we're over 78,000 in 20, 21 countries. Uh, and, and it's pretty incredible because at the end of the day, we really built the real estate brokerage that each one of us that was part of building eXp in the early days wanted to work for. None of us came with the idea of this is a brokerage we're going to build so we can make a lot of money. In some respects it was, but it was done from the perspective of how do we make the benefits for an agent so good that we get the benefits of brokerage ownership. And that was really kind of the idea that we started with and said, this might work. Uh, I said, this would work for me, I would do it, um, but we didn't know how many other people would get it, but we thought we'd at least try it out. And we figured if we could get to 300 agents, we, we might have a shot. It took us a few years to get there. I think it was 2012-ish, 2013, when we got to 300 agents. Um, 2012, I went and attended a T. Harv Eckert event, uh, Millionaire Mind Intensive. I, I think they still do those, but um, uh, went there, and I realized I wasn't thinking big enough. And I'd always thought that ownership in a brokerage was something that I would have wanted as an agent. In fact, I went to my prudential uh, managers and said, how do I get uh, equity? And, the, the two guys that own the office says we're not giving up any. So, okay, that, uh, so that didn't work. Uh, when I was at Keller, I was offered a 1% interest in a, a market center, even though I was 30% of the volume of the office. And, and then I read the franchise agreement. I'm like, seriously, I've got to agree to this for 1%? And I'm like, um, uh, I'll pass. But, but when we, we launched eXp, we, we wanted to share equity. So we actually bought a public company in 2013 uh, with the with the single purpose of, of distributing equity, we didn't we didn't raise any money from private equity or Wall Street or any of that stuff to, to get the public company. We actually literally bought the public company, merged ourselves into it, and in 2014 created our agent ownership initiatives. We've literally created mil uh, not millions, but we've created you know hundreds, if not thousands, of agents who have become um, you know hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, maybe even million dollar plus of equity just from, from their, their activities as an agent. So it's been really cool to kind of build this, this model out. So we really wanted to build this really agent-centric real estate brokerage model. And, and inside of it, we've got all the tools and, and trappings that you would expect. We've got a really good CRM platform um, through KV Core, so agents get uh, CRM. We also introduced uh, about two, three years ago, healthcare. First, first real estate brokers that created a nationwide healthcare option for real estate professionals. <laughs> and, and we keep on thinking about uh, how do we keep on improving this uh, on behalf of the agents. That's basically all, everything that we do in the background is we just keep on iterating on the agent value proposition. Um, uh, I've, I've had boardroom discussion. I'm kind of giving you some some stuff in 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 the uh, in the company, but we've actually had to turn over board members and executives and other people uh, that were thinking about the, um, uh, the the company, not the agent. They wanted to basically create something that just created massive amounts of profit, quote unquote, for shareholders. They weaponized the word in the boardroom, and and I had to go over go through somewhat of a 
hostile situation with various different board members and others because this is a very agent-centric brokerage. So this is just some of the stuff that we've done to kind of bring us to this point. So, um, so I want to just give you a little bit of history. You know, EXP, it's, a, it's an amazing company. If, you, if you're not with us, join us. Um, make it simple. Put yourself out of your misery. You'll, you'll be miserable if you stay where you're at because one... <laughs> Because we're just going to make it that much better anyway, so it's, uh, we're just going to keep on doing that. So, um, you know, I, I could go on more, but I'm going to talk a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I, I was asked to, to talk about was really kind of the future of real estate brokerage. And, uh, you know, I've, um, back in 2009, you know, we, we imagined what the future of the real estate brokerage would look like. And in 2005, 6, 7, you know, everybody was talking about, and I know some of you, um, you know, either... I don't know if anybody like said, oh yeah, I've been in over 20 years, but the, the, those who have been in the business for, you know, for, for the length of time I've been in the business, 20 years, you will remember when everybody was talking about all the stuff that eXp is today back in 2005, six and seven. Cloud-based, work from anywhere, you know, not, you know, all this stuff, all that stuff was talked about and yet nobody had done it in 2009. And so we were the first company to really embrace the future of real estate. So, you know, being kind of th this cutting edge company back then, we do think about some of the stuff of what, what's gonna look like in the next you know, 10 years, let's just say. I'm just gonna give you some ideas, some thoughts. Um, many of these are things that you've already thought about, you've had conversations, it's been, people have talked about it in Inman, they've done this, but maybe give you a little fresh perspective, you know, whether it, it be, 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 be um, interesting or not, but I think it will be um, interesting. You know, I think one of the things is just imagine 10 years from now. So 10 years from now, it's not very long. You know, 10 years will go by fairly quickly. Um, it, 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 you know, we've been in business almost well, over 12 years, and it doesn't feel like 12 years took that long to get here. You know, it, uh, you know, it, it, it goes fairly fast, and we've, we've obviously changed the game quite a bit. There's a lot of companies copying things that we're doing, which is pretty interesting just to think about how companies have now adapted to whether it be uh, you know, more cloud-based or you know, the compensation models for agents or, or what have you, and eXp was really a pioneer. But you know, one of the things is the real estate office. Um, you know, how many of you think that real estate offices are getting bigger or smaller? Who's, who here is for bigger? Oh, we got one. <laughs> Maybe it's because I raised my hand. Maybe it was like sympathetic. To, I didn't want to be, me to be the only person. Uh, <laughs> Uh, holding my hand up, uh, but um, you know, how many think that real estate offices are going to be smaller? Or, yeah. You know, so, I, I, I'm with you. I think that physical real estate offices are going to get smaller, um, and 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 they'll just they'll change in some unique and interesting ways. Obviously, when we think about the idea that you know there's a, there's going to be a place for boutique offices in um, you know ocean shores or um, you know or or different places that's kind of resorty. I think those will always be there. I think there's always going to be a place for that. But the, you know, in town, big office where you got to drive 15, 20 minutes to get there, I don't. I, I think that's going away. But I think there's, 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 um, you know, co-working is obviously going to become a bigger thing. And so the ability to drop in and use a co-work space uh, to work and be around other professionals uh, that are in maybe complementary or maybe customers might make some sense. The other. The other thing is, is I think the, the metaverse, when we think about, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, of course, changed the name of Facebook to Meta for a whole variety of reasons, some of which may be just to distract people from what the problems Facebook was having. But if you, how many of you have put on the, uh, the Oculus 2 headsets? Okay, so quite a, quite a few people. Um, have you went into the Horizon workroom and, and checked it out? It's actually pretty cool. You know, it's... Uh, I, I can't stay in there for more than 20 minutes without getting dizzy, but it, it's it's a really neat environment. Um, it, it really does feel like you're somewhere else, and 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 so it's got some cool cool things that go along with that. But eventually, I truly believe that every real estate professional will have their own version of a a virtual office, um, and there could be a whole variety of reasons. It, it could have um, Matterport-like uh, walkthroughs of homes that you have listed, and you could potentially be in there as an avatar with a human 
your, your form that looks quite a bit like you, if not is you, uh, being projected into this virtual space to actually do virtual open houses, literally walking people through the house, room to room, pointing out all the features and actually understanding the home and people will be able to come in from all over the world. And so, you know, buying homes, more and more sight unseen will become uh, a, a more practical uh, application of technology because you'll know the home so well. How many of you, especially in this market, have sold homes sight unseen? Wow, that's a lot of hands. Um, you, know, you know, you think about that back in, uh, back in 2005, 2006, it happened occasionally. We, we, we would have somebody like, like buy sight unseen, but it was very rare. But now the market's so hot that literally people are just throwing in offers and just lobbing it across saying, all cash, no inspection. I don't even see the house. I'll just buy it. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 you know it, it's pretty pretty crazy because they, you know, people just assume that if they screw up, they can sell it the next day for you know, 50000 more than they paid for it. So um, whether that's true or not, different, different scenario. But you know, in, right now, there's this big trend with, um, with the glasses. Now, the Oculus headset I think is is just a a prototype of the future of what we might think about in headsets. Um, uh, right now, the resolution isn't there. There's a little bit of delay. It kind of makes you dizzy. You know, you know, you pretty much have to have a trash can beside you in case you get sick. But but eventually, you know, Apple's been working really hard on on some some uh, glasses, and the, and they're supposedly pretty trendy and cool and. If you, if, you, if you believe the stuff that you see online, eventually you're gonna have these AR glasses. So AR stands for augmented reality, um, but you'll literally be able to do all this sort of you know, cool engagement with either a virtual world or have uh, virtual stuff show up in your physical world. And so when you think about your CRM and what your CRM is gonna be like when you can sort of bring it up and have a little screen that gives you all the kids' names, the dogs' names, the neighborhood, the, the, all this stuff is right there. They won't know you're looking at it, and they'll just think you're smart. You know, the, of course, they'll say, oh, you're wearing the glasses? Oh, I'm wearing the glasses. I'm, <laughs> how's, uh, how's, how's your daughter Jenny? Which they've never, ever met, and, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it'll be pretty cool because we'll have all this sort of engagement with, with, with because of, 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 of some of this stuff. Obviously, in the real estate industry, we're going to eventually get to smart contracts, and, and we think about right now, um, you know, we, I'm sure we all enjoy filling out all the form fields that we have on our MLS contracts and then, and then sending it off to compliance and then all that stuff and figuring out that you did forget the lead-based paint disclosure again and, and, and whatever, you know, that whole, that whole process. But, you know, smart contracts are, are coming and, and they probably will have some sort of blockchain element. Some of it will be for marketing. Some of it will actually probably have some practical benefits to it. Um, you know, uh, the marketing side will be, you know, first people to do smart based contracts that's on the blockchain. Sounds pretty cool, right? Uh, and, and, and then it's, so it's, it's uh, <laughs> I hear a voice, <laughs> a, a new realtor. <laughs> um, so the, you know, but the smart contracts are going to be are going to be pretty cool. I mean, you could already do some smart contracts on Ethereum and Chainlink and some other 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 stuff where you can kind of make things happen. Um, but I think eventually, you know, how many, you know, how many of your clients actually read the contract when you actually put it in front of them? You say, what's the what, what do you want to offer for the price? How much you can put down for earnest money? And then, uh, you know, uh, we should get an inspection, right? Yeah. Well, of course, right now it's like inspection. <laughs> you want the house or not? <laughs> Um, but but eventually, you know, you'll you'll put in all this. You'll you'll still do the the data fields, but the smart contracts are going to be smart. Um, there we're, there's going to be some understanding from the consumer side what what a smart contract means. It's going to be from an agent perspective, and this stuff's going to get really really simple from from a from an agent perspective. Sort of in the interim, one of the things that we're getting ready to do just inside of EXP, and again for all those agents who were agents 20 years ago versus just got licensed in the last three or four or five years. Um, 20 years ago, it was actually way easier to deal with contracts than it is today. Um, we didn't have Skyslope back then. We didn't have you know, all this stuff. So we didn't have to actually re-enter the stuff that we already entered in the contract. We didn't have to do a whole bunch of extra stuff. We just literally took a copy of the contract, put it in a box, and then 30 days later, picked up a check. 
that was a way better system. So, um, and, and so, you know, we're, we're actually working on actually a system right now which would actually kind of create an analog for that um, in that uh, right now all these form fields that are on contracts, um, we've actually got some machine learning and character recognition stuff and, 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 and some AI that we're actually in the process of building. We've got a couple million into it so far. But literally, you'll be able to sort of hit send from or forward from your email box if you get a PDF of your contract um, uh, signed around, uh, push, push the forward button, and, and it will actually read all that stuff and actually tell you if you left off the lead-based paint disclosure without you ever having to actually upload and, and, and go through a checklist of all the stuff that was supposed to be on the contract. So there's some cool stuff that, that's, that we're doing. But in the future, this stuff's going to get so much easier. Um, you know, the, the reality is, is that you know, we're going to have an AI. Our consumers, customers are going to have an AI. We're going to literally have an agreement. Our, our agreement will be, you know, it, we'll, we'll take Randy Bird's script and just say, hey, do you mind if I hook up my AI with your AI? And then we can go search for properties together. You know, and, and so, so it's going to be really interesting because it will be able to know what your schedule is and their schedule is. And it's going to know their preferences and sort of, you know, it'll start to actually, you know, kind of mold you. I mean, I love having an assistant in, 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 in that they'll just, they just tell me where to go and where to show up. And then, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it'd be really cool just to know that you're going to show a property and there's a 80% likelihood that they're going to buy the house because it's already done all the pre-work for you. So, so the, the, you know, I think in the future, this business gets a lot easier, but there'll still be literally 2 million agents, I think, in the industry. So I think when we think about the industry, right now we've got you know, 1.5 million licensed realtors, and we've got another half million to a million of, of, of licensed people who, who, who aren't part of NAR. But I think we're still going to have you know, millions of agents in, in, in North America. But I think the business will get, will get a little bit easier, but more complicated. So more complicated that if you're not sort of technically oriented or or a little bit of a geek at heart, I think it, it, there's always gonna be this learning curve. And, and, and I think this last 10 plus years has probably been one of the toughest learning curves for people who are not technical in real estate. And, and I think that, you know, it, it really is probably part of this new generation of realtors, that, that, that are realtors, where they're coming up, so don't correct me if you're, if, if I mispronounce every once in a while. Um, but, uh, you know, this next generation uh, of agents, um, they're, they're literally, you know, they're already connected to their phone. They're already, you know, they've already got their teams on, on, uh, on whatever game they're playing, whether it be Fortnite or whatever. I mean, they're all, they're uberly connected on all this stuff. And so the gamification of real estate over the next few years is going to be really interesting to sort of think about. Um, you know, I've, I've got now all these apps that sort of measure my, you know, I've got this aura ring. Uh, I'm getting, I'm going to get a continuous glucose monitor. I've got all this, this stuff. I talked to Jarek Robbins. He, um, he's uh, actually president of Success Magazine. We bought Success a couple years ago, but we, we hired him. He's Tony Robbins' son, but he's, he's all about wearables and how, how it will actually tell you when the best time to prospect is based on your own sort of DNA. You know, so, so, you know, you know, if, how, how many of you learn that you're supposed to prospect from 10 to 2, but you're not like 10 to 2 people, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and, and then you found out that everybody was at work when you were trying to call them at home, you know, some, so, you know, have, having an AI that actually figures out, you know, you know, all this stuff and takes on all this data and starts to actually make it kind of interesting and easy to sort of stay in the game so it actually matches your bio rhythms and stuff like that. So when we think about the future of real estate, I think there's just a lot of really cool stuff that's gonna happen over the next next number of years. Uh, you know, EXP, you know, we're, we're cloud-based brokerage. Um, we're, um, we're 78,000 agents, but we're, you know, one of the things we, we think about is, you know, agents all over the world are kind of the same. They're, they're in, in that they're out there listing properties, they're working with buyers and sellers and trying to put, put deals together. And yet, at the same time, um, you know, up until, you know, um, EXP, I'm sure there's some other models that could probably claim some of this as well, but, um, you know, agents are really some of the most um, least valued people in a real estate brokerage, at least historically. And, and they were there kind of as a necessary evil to, to a brokerage, as opposed to the asset that they really are. And we see this really around the world even more than the United States and Canada. In the United States, you know, 
Remax really was probably the first one to sort of put agents sort of more front and center and make them a more important part of the, the, the transaction. And, 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 then, and then Keller Williams and then of course EXP. But around the world, there's still a lot of agents that are on 50-50 splits and with small boutiques in, in different parts of the world. In, in the UK, it was kind of crazy because they basically treat agents like used car salespeople. They give them basic minimum subsistence, um, you know, pay them minimum wage as a draw against commission, and then their commission is only like 20% of the, of the commissions that's generated. Um, so, you know, we, we've went into the UK, we're the fastest growing brokerage in the UK, we're the fastest growing brokerage in a lot of countries now, because we've actually made the agent the very center of the whole real estate experience. We make them uh, the most important part, whether it being helping with the lead gen, helping them with compensation, helping them with sort of, um, uh, with helping us grow the brokerage and then giving them the benefits that the broker owner used to get. And it's pretty cool because as we sort of play this out and sort of game it out, you know, we think about 10 years of the future of real estate, but we also think about in the next five to 10 years, the future of EXP. In the next five years, we truly believe that, you know, there's a there's a significant, a really good chance that we'll actually be a half million agents, you know, uh, 200 or so in the U.S. Uh, and, and 200 or so, maybe 300 um, in, in, in internationally uh, in terms of the number of agents. We're in 21 countries, we'll be in, you know, probably 100 in the next five years. And, and there's a potential that, you know, uh, that there will be a million plus agents in the next little bit. And of course, our next speaker, when he comes up, he, he definitely is all about you know, sort of what the future looks like for, for EXP, but it really comes down to really helping and making an impact on agents' lives that may not have the opportunity to, to grow something significant. Um, I was, uh, when I got in the business, how many of you, when you got your real estate license, were told that you have a real estate business? And lots of people? Okay. Um, so, the definition of a business really is that the business will run without you, but if you got hit by a bus, did you have a real estate business or did you have a business that had you? <laughs> okay, and, and so that's, you know, that was one of my quick realizations early on was that I was sold the, the idea that I have a real estate business, and technically it was true, but until I actually, you know, brought on my first buyer's agent or brought on my first assistant or really is the agent side, so assistants could help me with organize and that, do that stuff so I could do more business, but I'm geeky, so I was kind of my own assistant. I kind of did operate a little differently in that I hired agents first and then brought in staff later. Um, but until you actually have that, you know, those folks in, you really don't have a business yet. And then the, the, the other part is that a lot of people aren't really good at managing people. And so then it's like, how do you do that if you're not really good with managing people? And so the EXP model, when we sort of solve, we were thinking, how do we solve for that? And that's where, you know, our revenue share opportunity came in. And we have, literally have, you know, agents and brokers now that are making substantially more than they ever made as an agent or a broker owner by just being part of a system that actually continues to scale and grow. And so that really was kind of the the, the, the way that we, we, we thought about the, the model. And so when we think about EXP, it's really a business platform that you we all own together. And, and as we, we grow together, um, you know, different aspects are going to, to, to grow at different rates based on what we're, we think is important. If we're really productive agents, we can grow an equity stake in the company that could be quite substantial over time. If we're more on the um, on the agent attraction side or or growing your sales organization, um, you know that's that could be a really substantial amount of additional income. Um, and so, you know, where do you focus? That's going to you know sort of ebb and flow where you're going to earn income in EXP. And and that's the really cool thing is you can build this however you want. And so, um, with that, I'm going to kind of turn it back over. But you know, thank you for for the invite. Thanks for having me here. It's Guys, give it up for Glenn Sanford.